This morning, of course, it's that time when we have the TTPS that joins us every single Monday. Inspector Michelle Lewis is here with us this morning yet again. Good morning, Inspector. Good morning to you, sir, and morning to all your listeners. How are you doing this morning? I am good. I am right. remain concerned with the figures. Of course, of course. So let's get into, into um, dealing with some of these figures in some cases, right? Now, one of the hot topics uh, that have been going around is the, the firearm user's license. Yes. Uh, I want us this morning, if you could start maybe with, with how was the process by which we get uh, a firearm user's license? All right. So we are guided by the Firearms Act, mm -hmm. chapter, Act Chapter 1601, right? And within that act, um, it gives the Commissioner of Police um, the authority to issue persons with what we call FUL or firearm user's license and even firearm dealers user's dealer's license mm. as well, right? So you have the dealers who will be the person who will buy and sell and then you'll have the personal yeah. person to have firearm. So we're looking at the firearm user's license legally. Right. And so through that process, what will happen is that the person, there's a particular form that the person will fill out. Within that form and within the whole process of the application for an FUL, one of the things that it requires is that if the person is in a relationship with someone, I could visit in relationship with husband and wife or common law, mm -hmm. or there are other members of the household, that such persons give a statement to the police. Okay. So when you apply for a firearm user's license, everybody in your household has to give a statement to the police? Yeah, the, yeah, the, every so adult or everybody? No, not children. Not children, just right. adults. So okay. let me say, um, you may be living someone, you don't have a wife or husband, right. but you'd probably live with your parents still. We'll ask a statement from the person, the parents okay. or whoever else is in the house. Right. Because that person is supposed to give a truthful statement to tell us about your temperament. Ah, okay. Not right. that, that should be important. So apart from the psychometric testing and, and evaluation and mm -hmm. all those things, the physical and the doctor certificate and all of that, mm -hmm. we also need statement from persons who you're living with or have visiting relationship with, like husband and wife. So you're not married as yet, right. but that type of relationship exists. And what about your, in your workplace and things like that? Do we interview those people as well? No, because those persons in your workplace, um, not necessarily. But who you live with are really the persons who will be able to. In the office of doing the investigation, they will go to your community and they could include where you work. Yeah. Because we need statements from persons, you know, depending, for example, if you're self-employed, we would need to get, you know, certain yeah. documents and stuff like that. Is there so a minimum a, amount of statements that no, you that isn't. you collect? No. no, no okay. So it could be one statement, it could be 10, it could be 500. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And so the officer is doing an investigation mm -hmm. to satisfy himself or herself that the application on this person. So in the application process, the investigator can say that no, they don't think that this person is fit. fit. Right. Or that this person is yet make a recommendation to the commissioner and it is the commissioner of police who would so give. Okay. And then uh, when I, when I, if I go through this process and I apply for a firearm user's license, mm -hmm. uh, that entitles me to have one one, one firearm. Well, the act is not specific to say how much you can act. But can. each license would be specific. But you're right. So your firearm user license would say what type of firearm you have, how many mm -hmm. rounds of ammunition you ought to have mm -hmm. with you. Okay. And you always, you always have that um, certificate with you mm -hmm. or the booklet with you. Right. And is it is it a matter of all right? Um, so you're saying it's not a matter of one one license, one firearm. One no. license can give me use of several firearms? No, the, the booklet would say how many firearms you have on it. Okay. So, um, let me say you have two, I'm just saying, like you have a, a pistol and you have a shotgun. Right. It would say on it what type of firearm you have or you ought to have possession of mm -hmm. and the amount of ammunition that you would or you're supposed to have in relation to those two. Okay. Anything outside of that is illegal. Okay. And Persons with uh, with criminal record, I'm assuming that they're not allowed to have a firearm user's license. Right. So the whole process includes a certificate of character. Right. And so, for example, where um, someone would have had a domestic matter before, mm -hmm. and maybe the girlfriend or boyfriend or a brother or sister or some relative would have made a report to the police in relation to a domestic violence matter, mm -hmm. that report is in the station. Right. So when that person applies for an, app for, um, an FUL license, mm -hmm. or, um, yeah, F FUL, right? Um, that application that goes through the system, the officer will be able to see when they run that person's name right. through the system whether that person has any report, not necessarily charge here. Yeah? Right, but any report. Any report. Now, Inspector, I, I don't know, I mean, it's been a while since I've, I've made a report at the police station, mm -hmm. um, but up to, up to the last time that I did, 
the information was written down in a huge book mm -hmm. um, by hand. Mm -hmm. If I am, if that was a report against somebody, mm -hmm. how is it that uh, if I apply for a firearm user's license in another district, in another city, in another part of Trinidad and Tobago, um, how is it that they're going to get that information? Although they said the information or report is recorded in a diary, in mm -hmm. such a diary, it is also submitted via forms and sent on a database. Okay. So, that so it's both, every, everything that's in that station diary is also digitally recorded. That's correct. And I think we needed to clear that up because I don't think plenty of people understand that. Yeah. Um, okay. So in a case where, I mean, unfortunately, we saw the situation that happened uh, right. last week, or mm -hmm. was it over the weekend, where, okay. where you know, the, the man who had a user license, a firearm user license, yes. and you would have engaged with, I mean, okay, first of all, when you get a license, right, is there a training process that you have to go through in order to be able to learn how to use these things yeah, properly? so you will have, um, so before you actually get the FUL, you will have a provisional license. Okay. And that will be for about a year or so. Mm -hmm. And with that provisional license, you'll, be, you'll only be able to practice at the particular address for which that, if that provisional license is for. So, so like it's a, wherever the range, a training wherever, range, yeah, okay, training. okay. And so after that process, because then you will get a certificate of competence from the owner of that establishment saying that you are also fit. So there, it, it, is, a, it is a very, very comprehensive process mm -hmm. to obtain a, an, a, an FUL. It is not like you just walk in and you just walk back on it. The period of investigation mm -hmm. takes quite a period of time. And is there like a checklist that says, all right, so you're a business owner or you're a, a doctor, you're high risk for, for whatever reason of being targeted? For crime, is that is that how, how does it work in terms it's, of reasons? It's not necessarily for that purpose. When the officer does the investigation and he um, takes note of all the risk factors and the entire investigation because it is individual, mm -hmm. then he'll be able to or she will be able to determine whether this person is fit or not. And it's just a matter of fit, it's not a matter of whether when it's needed. Say, when we say fit, I mean in, in the whole scheme of things, yeah, so whether it is you have a, any domestic violence against you, mm -hmm. whether you're physical, your eyesight, your vision, your everything, your temperament, your attitude, everything is has to be intact for you to obtain an FUL. Now, what happens sometimes with persons who an, um, applies for an FUL? Mm -hmm. Sometimes the spouse do not give an accurate account or statement to the police in relation to the person who's making an application for an FUL. That is to say that even though there might be issues within the family, the spouse, male or female, doesn't say it in the statement. So the statement supports the applicant and it may not necessarily be the true record of the person's temperament. And so because that statement wasn't truthful, because we are relying on certain pieces of document to guide right. us, right? Because that wasn't truthful. It could be that somebody could obtain an FUL because of the contents of a statement of the same persons in the household. Right. Now tell me something, Inspector. When you get the, the license, right, how often does the police check back in with you to make sure that you're, you're the same person? Because, I mean, we all, we all grow and we all change on a daily basis, right? So suppose today I, I normal, I good, my temperament is fine, I'm, I'm fantastic, and we're having good relationships and everything nice, right? And then next week, your horn, right? Mm -hmm. And then my whole mental starts to change. How often do we check? Do we check the fire the, the, the users with these right, licenses? So there's a renewal of FUL every year. Every year. Right? But further to that, even though let's say in a relationship, and the temperament of someone, like it says, has mm -hmm. has changed, and then this person is an FUL holder. Um, too many times do we see in society that persons hide and block and refuse to come out with the truth when something is going wrong in the household, maybe because of, of your um, economic um, um, Sometimes it's just shatter, shame. It's just shame. embarrassment, but yeah. it can cost you your life. Mm -hmm. So in some cases, we have no report. For example, in this particular matter, the police has no report of any mm -hmm. domestic mal um, violence um, made against, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes when people are ashamed to make a report or to come out and say it can cost you your life and it can cause your family a lot of trauma, so it is better to come out and say so and let the police intervene and take away that firearm from the person of firearms. And what, what if it's a situation where there was no domestic violence? What if there wasn't anything before? Like, you know, people, people argue, mm -hmm. people get upset, right? That's, that's human nature. We, we can get upset, we can argue. And, you know, we can say, all right, let's say you and I, Inspector, we get away and we say, all right, I don't want nothing to do with you and I go on my way. Right. But then you know 
are, 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 are officer of the law and mm-hmm. you have a firearm user's license, mm-hmm. right? And you come and you say, boy, that ruckus for a thing and in a moment of rage, just for a split second, mm-hmm. you happen to lose it. And in, in that split second, are there any repercussions? How, how do we deal with that? How do we deal with the repercussions of that? Right, in that so split second, when we lose it. Not every police officer is, um, has an FUL. No, I don't mean... I, just, I know, I just but I'm just... Yeah. Because we have listeners, so we don't want people to take it for granted <laughs> right, that right. every police officer actually has a personal, right? Okay. Um, so it's an application process for police as well. Right. Right? So it's not automatic. All right. So let's say, for example, the person, um, what you want to say, um, needed some... No, like they, they trip in a moment, like, you know, they've been, they have a nice temperament, everything is good. They check all the boxes that, that you know, we went through the, the requirements for, right? But in a moment, in a, in a fit of rage or in a moment where, you know, for whatever reason, you, you're more upset than you've ever been before. You know, your, your, your heart strings pulling, you know, that, that moment where you're, I mean, we know what blind rage can do. Well, so we, I mean, you can't cover all the bases, right? right? So if, for example, something like that happens, then, I mean, it, there's nothing that you can do other than, you know, um, psychiatric evaluation at, you know, mm-hmm. a medical institution or something like that, right? But there are always, in most cases, some telltale signs that, that people sometimes just um, refuse to t- pay attention to, yeah. and that can cause, you know, um, their demise. So where, for example, let's say that someone generally behaves well right. and the relationship goes bad and this person now is threatening you and you are aware that this person is an FUL mm-hmm. holder. Um, when you make a report to the police, you need to inform the police that this person is in fact an FUL, an FUL holder. holder. And what happens in that process is that um, the police will seize the firearm until the investigation is complete to ensure that that person does not put themselves and others at risk. Mm-hmm. And that we do not have a report or have to be treated with a murder suicide or anything like of, of the yeah. sort. So I mean something, in the renewal process, do we go through the whole checklist again every single year? No, it is not that comprehensive. Well, um, what is the process when it gets to the renewal stage? Well, it is much more simpler than that really. Mm. And so um, we really heavily de- depend on members of a household if something is going wrong, or even members of the community if something is going wrong, to inform us of that. Um, because outside of the process that we would have done initially, mm-hmm. um, for the person, okay, so they'll come back and they'll do an update with their, you know, vision and whatever, whatever, right. whatever. But we're still re- really relying on members of the community to be truthful mm-hmm. and tell us if this person is still a competent holder. All right. Well, Inspector, unfortunately, we run out of time. You know, this thing does go every Monday. But I appreciate you coming here and sharing that information with us. I think it's, you know, we've been seeing lots of rumors and things floating around the place. And it's nice when we can clarify and say exactly how the process works and um, how we can do our part to to help um, going forward. You know, one of the things that we always teach our children is good secret and bad secret. Yeah. I know as adults, we sometimes hold bad secrets, which can cost us our lives. So this morning, we want to encourage adults, the same advice that we give the children to take it for ourselves and do not hold a bad secret that can cause you and other members of your family your life. So this morning we say thanks once again, Rocker, for having us. No problem. Our pleasure. If you see something, say something. Say something. Inspector Michelle Lewis of the TTPS, ladies and gentlemen, we take a quick break and we come back with more inside in our morning show. Stay tuned. Peace.